Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Isa, Professor of Pathology. Today we are going to talk about COVID-19. Let's know everything about COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2 Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome or SARS. SARS is the abbreviation of Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. It's a viral respiratory infectious disease of zoonotic origin. It is caused by Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus. You know that nearly a third of upper respiratory tract infections are caused by coronaviruses. For the non-medical, upper respiratory tract means the nasal cavity, uh, pharynx, and larynx. We call this upper respiratory tract or upper respiratory system. It's the nasal cavity, pharynx, and larynx. Nearly a third of the upper respiratory tract infections are caused by coronaviruses. But the SARS virus differs from previously known coronaviruses in that it infects the lower respiratory tract and spreads throughout the body. For the non-medical, the lower respiratory tract uh, means mainly the lungs. It starts with the trachea, bronchi, and the lungs. And when we say the lower respiratory tract, we um, mean the lungs mainly. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS-CoV or SARS-CoV-1, first appeared in November 2002 in the Guangdong province of China. The SARS virus seems to have been first transmitted to humans through contact with wild musked palm civet that are eaten in China. SARS-CoV is thought to be an animal virus. So SARS is an animal virus from an uncertain animal reservoir, perhaps bats. So it starts from bats and then spreads it to other animal civet cat and first infected humans in the Guangdong province of southern China in 2002. Then subsequent cases were spread person to person, mainly through infected inf uh, respiratory secretions, which we call uh, droplet infections. Although some cases may have been contracted from stool, between fall 2002 and spring 2003, the WHO reported a total of 8,427 SARS cases from 29 different countries and 813 deaths worldwide with a fatality rate of 9.6%. Coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 is a highly infectious respiratory disease caused by novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2. Known as Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus SARS-CoV-2, also called 2019 Novel Coronavirus. 2019 NCOV, also known as Human Coronavirus 2019, HCOV-19, or H lowercase COV-19. It emerged in Wuhan, China in December 2019. That's why it is named COVID-19. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak of a public health emergency on the search on searches of January 2020 and as a pandemic on the 11th of March 2020. As of October 26, 2020, more than uh, 43.6 million cases have been confirmed, with more than 1.16 million deaths attributed to COVID-19. 
U.S. confirmed cases are uh, more than 8 million and U.S. deaths more than 225,000. This attributed to COVID-19. This is the confirmed cases per um, 100,000 100, population as of uh, 26 October uh, 2020. Etiology. When we discuss a disease, we, we have to follow the core of pathology. The core of pathology is that we have to know the etiology, pathogenesis, morphology, and clinical course. And the etiology means the cause of the disease. Uh, so the cause of the disease, SARS-CoV-2, is a positive sense single-stranded RNA virus. You know, pandemic viruses like influenza, HIV, and SARS cross from animals to humans. Influenza, for example, cross from birds to humans, and HIV from chimpanzee to humans, and SARS-CoV-1 and its close cousin, SARS-CoV-2, most likely from bats to humans. It is thought that each of those viruses on their evolutionary journey jumped from another species. So for SARS-CoV-1, it starts in bats, and then the second reservoir is cat civet, and then to humans. For SARS-CoV-2, it starts in bat, bat is the main reservoir, and then transmitted to most probably pangolin, then transmitted to humans. So why bats? Bats, because uh, scientists and researchers found that uh, SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus has a close genetic similarity, nearly 96% identical to a bat coronavirus. Since the outbreak of severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS, 18 years ago, a large number of SARS-related coronaviruses have been discovered in their natural reservoir host, bats. Bats carry coronaviruses but don't get sick. Pangolin may have spread coronavirus to humans. Let's talk about the transmission of the disease. How does COVID-19 spread between people? COVID-19 spread between people through direct or close contact, uh, less than one meter, with infected people via mouth and nose secretions, mainly droplet infections. The main way of spread is by droplet infections, droplet infections, or mouth and nose secretions. These include saliva, respiratory secretions, or secretion, which we call secretion droplets. Droplets typically do not travel more than six feet. Six feet means uh, 180 centimeters, which means about two meters. Person-to-person -person contact, for example, during kissing, hugging, or hand shaking, uh, or transmission may be also indirect, indirect through contaminated objects or surfaces. People with the virus in their nose and throat may leave infected droplets on objects and surfaces. We call this vomits. This occurs when they sneeze, cough, sing, or uh, talk loudly, uh, and or touch these surfaces, uh, tables, uh, door, or uh, handle, handrails, and other people may become infected by touching these objects or surfaces, then touching their eyes, nose, mouth before cleaning their hands. 
these viruses can survive in a variety of environments and on surfaces for 24 hours. And in some, some researchers reported that it may stay for days, maybe three to five days. Airborne transmission of sars cov 2 virus or aerosol is possible, enhanced by crowding and poor ventilation. Let's talk about airborne transmission or aerosol transmission. The uh, it is possible, but the extent to which this mode of transmission has contributed to the pandemic is still controversial. WHO, um, 20 October uh, 2020, aerosol transmission can occur in specific settings, particularly indoors, crowded, and inadequately ventilated spaces where infected persons spend long periods of time with others, such as restaurants, uh, car practices, fitness classes, nightclubs, uh, places of worship, offices. So what is airborne uh, or aerosol transmission? You know that the viral particles produced by talking and breathing produce smaller but more numerous particles. See, if this is the infected person who when talks or uh, when saying or talk loudly or talks, it um, spread a droplet infection, which is the large ones. The droplet infection may be large or medium sized, and this causes the direct infection here to other person and it may fall on surfaces also and cause indirect infection but there is also so many small particles smaller particles which can be carried by air like this and this form the airborne route and um, this what we call aerosol aerosol or this very small particles can be transmitted for a short range and also for a long range and because it is very small it is not affected by gravity but it uh, stay in the air for longer period of time and it may also cause indirect it may fall on surfaces so these particles, known as aerosol particles, the diameter of these particles is in the micron range and too small to settle because of gravity. And instead, the viral particles remain in the air, uh, within air particles, and are carried by air currents and dispersed by diffusion or air turbulence. In absence of air current, the aerosol particles can remain in the air for hours, maybe three hours. So the, these can be inhaled by people in the surrounding area of COVID-19 infected person. So these small, very small particles may stay in the air for about three hours in this area. So if anyone pass in this uh, zone, it may get infection and it can cause potential infection due to aerosol particles containing the virus traveling to the lungs. Transmission COVID-19 can occur more easily in the three C's, three C's. The first C is crowded places with many people nearby. The second C is close contact setting, the, especially where people have uh, conversations very near each other. And the third C is confined and enclosed spaces with poor ventilation. So this is the three C's. Three C's enhance the infection. The risk of COVID-19 spreading is higher in places where these three C's overlap. Let's talk about other ways of spread. So the mainly way of spread, we say it is droplet infection. 
and then we can say also it may be indirect by vomit and also we talked about the airborne and aerosol spread. Uh, there is other way fecal oral route of spread. SARS-CoV-2 has been detected in non-respiratory specimens, including stool, blood, ocular secretions, and semen. But the role of these sites in transmission is uncertain. In particular, several reports have described detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA from stool specimens, even after viral RNA could no longer be detected from the upper respiratory specimen. And live virus has been cultured from stool in rare cases. Now, let's talk about COVID-19 coronavirus structure and the proteins. COVID-19 coronavirus structure and the proteins. Coronavirus have four main structural proteins. Uh, spike protein S, membrane protein M, envelope protein E, and nucleocaspid N protein. So this is the spike protein S. This is the membrane protein, this is the envelope protein, and this is the nucleocaspid protein or N protein. Spike protein, spike glycoprotein S, this is the green one. This is the spike glycoprotein or S protein, this one. Uh, spike protein uh, form large trimeric structure. As you see, it is large trimeric structure. This is essential for the entry into the host cells uh, upon receptor binding and the membrane fusion. So this is essential for the entry into the cell. The spikes are critically important. It is like a key cut for a specific lock. If you see, the spikes slides neatly into the matching sites of receptor. Here's the, the spikes. It, um, this uh, slides neatly into the matching uh, sites of the receptor. The receptor is the AC2. AC2. Uh, AC2 receptor, which is the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor. Uh, this is an enzyme attached to cell membrane. Uh, this is uh, located in the lungs, arteries, heart, kidney, and also in the gastrointestinal tract. This angiotensin converting enzyme 2, uh, this enzyme, this catalyzes the hydrolysis of angiotensin 2, which is vasoconstrictor peptide, into angiotensin 1 to 7, which is vasodilator. That's why it helps in treating hypertension and other cardiovascular diseases. So it is beneficial in many diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, and other cardiovascular diseases. This is the AC2. So AC2 also serve as the entry point of the coronaviruses, of some coronaviruses, including SARS-CoV or SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2. The spike proteins also, however, are targeted by uh, neutralizing enzymes, the host neutralizing enzymes. So this can be targeted by the host neutralizing enzymes. This S protein is responsible for the binding and for membrane fusion and the entry into the host cell. Uh, if you look at this S protein, you can see it is a trimeric, and each one, each monomer of the trimeric S protein uh, contains two subunits, S1 and S2. So this is S1 and S2, and the second S1 and S2, and the third trimeric is S1 and S2. S1 is responsible for the attachment to the receptor, and S2 is responsible for fusion with the membrane. So this is the spike protein. You can see it is uh, very beautiful. 
membrane or uh, matrix or membrane protein. This is the matrix or membrane protein, and as you see, it is the most abundant structural protein of the virus. The matrix or M protein uh, is the uh, most abundant protein, this one, the yellow one, is the most abundant structural protein of the virus. M protein, uh, uh, this protein is responsible for regulation of membrane curvature uh, of the virus. Uh, and uh, it, uh, M protein of coronavirus plays a central role in virus assembly. It is very important in virus assembly. This means uh, turning the cellular membrane into workshops uh, where virus and the host factors uh, come together to make new virus particles. So M protein is very important. It interacts uh, with the nucleocaspid N protein uh, to make the parts which uh, um, uh, form the new variants to bud from the host cell. That's why it is important for budding of the virus. Uh, so it is a transmembrane transport of nutrition. It is important for that and the formation of envelope. And it is important for the budding because it reacts with the uh, nucleocaspid N protein, uh, form this uh, M nucleoprotein uh, reaction near the budding site. Then go to the viral envelope. The viral envelope is the outermost layer of many types of viruses. It's called the viral envelope. The viral envelope protects the genetic material in their life cycle when traveling between host cells. You know, the virus travels from host to host, uh, so uh, this envelope protects the virus particle. The virus envelope are typically derived from portions of the host cell membranes, means it is the host cell membrane of the animals and of the, uh, uh, the humans. It may be from animals and humans, from civet cats and from humans, and it is phospholipids and protein, as any membranes, uh, so it is phospholipids and proteins. This envelope can be break down because it contains too much lipids. It can be break down by soap uh, and this soap killing the virus. That's why washing hands with soap and water kills the virus because it destroys the virus envelope. So the virus envelope protein is only present in small quantities. This is the virus envelope protein here. Uh, the light green one, it is present in very small quantities. As you see, it is very little, very small uh, quantities and most likely form ion chan channels. E protein are not necessarily needed for viral replication. It is not necessarily needed for the viral replication, but essential for infectivity and the pathogenesis. Uh, glycoproteins on the surface of the envelope serve to identify and bind to receptor sites on host membrane. The viral envelope then fuses with the host membrane, allowing the caspid and the viral genome to enter and infect the host cell. So viral envelope is a lipid bilayer the inner layer form from the virus and the outer layer from the host. The envelope protein E and the nucleocaspid, both of them interfere with the host immune response. So they are, um, they, um, this is the, um, the uh, importance of this uh, E protein and the nucleocaspid, both of them interfere with the host immune response. Then go to, new, uh, to the nucleocaspid. Nucleocaspid, the coronavirus nucleocaspid N is a structural protein that forms complexes with the genomic RNA and ensure the maintenance of the RNA in these beads and uh, on string conformation. So this, it, um, 
uh, uh, ensure that the RNA uh, in this conformation, in this uh, beads on string conformation. Nucleocaspid, coronavirus nucleocaspid N interact with the viral membrane. We said that interact with the viral membrane M during variant assembly. They are important for variant assembly and the budding of the virus. It plays a critical role in enhancing the efficiency of virus transcription and assembly. So it is important for virus transcription and assembly. SARS-CoV-2 structural proteins are, let's summarize, spike protein, S, envelope protein, E, membrane protein, M, and nucleoprotein or N protein. The pathogenesis, we are going to talk about the pathogenesis of coronavirus in a separate session.